Hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 4-1 on the frequency response or a response to a complex exponential. The objectives for today's lecture are to find the transfer function for a circuit by using frequency domain analysis and to find the frequency response by using the response to an LTI system for a complex exponential. In general, if x of t equal to the summation from k equals negative infinity to infinity, x of k e to the jk omega naught t is the input to an LTI system with frequency response h of j omega, then y of t, the output, is equal to the summation from k is equal to negative infinity to infinity, x of k, h of j k omega naught e to j k omega naught t, where we have y of k is equal to x of k times h of j k omega naught, which means that the magnitude of y of k is the magnitude of x of k times the magnitude of h of j k omega naught, and the phase angle for y of k is the phase angle for x of k plus the angle h of j k omega naught. If x of t is real valued, we can write x of t is equal to x of zero plus the summation from k equals one to infinity, two times the magnitude of x of k, cosine k omega naught plus the angle x of k. If h of t is real valued, then we have y of t equals y of zero plus two times the summation from k equals one to infinity, two times the magnitude of y of k, cosine k omega naught plus the angle y of k. We can also write this as y of t is equal to x of zero times h of zero plus the summation from k equals one to infinity, two times the magnitude of x of k, h of j k omega naught, cosine k omega naught t plus the angle for x of k plus the angle h of j k omega naught. This is the cosine form of the system response y of t for when x of t and h of t are both real valued. It should hopefully look similar to you to something we did when we did phasor analysis and some examples earlier in this course. Finding h of j omega. Since all physical circuits are causal, which implies h of t is equal to zero for t less than zero, we can find the system transfer function by using the following. h of s is equal to the integral from zero to infinity, h of t e to the minus st dt. Hopefully this looks familiar to you because this is the Laplace transform. If we substitute s equals j omega, we now have h of j omega equals the integral from zero to infinity, h of t e to the minus j omega t dt. I did an example earlier this in this course where I also showed you how to find the transfer function and frequency response by making this substitution s equals j omega. However, since h of t is causal, we can extend the lower limit of the integral to be h of j omega equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity, h of t e to the minus j omega t dt. In class activity one, for the following filter, what is the transfer function and frequency response? And if x of t is a sawtooth wave, what is y of t? The sawtooth wave is the same as that ramp wave that we've used for our prior examples. So first, we have this RC circuit, and hopefully it should look familiar to you. We've done several analysis of it several times. So if I call this R, and I call this C, we can immediately see that this is once again going to be a low pass filter where the transfer function H of S is going to be one over SC divided by R plus one over SC, which equals one over RC divided by S plus one over RC. And now substituting in the values for R and C, this is 50 over S plus 50. So we can see here that it's going to be a low pass filter with a cutoff of 50 radians per second. The frequency response can be found by replacing S with J omega. So H of J omega is equal to 50 over J omega plus 50. And as I was saying, the shape for this low pass filter would look like the following, where the maximum is at one and the cutoff frequency is at 50 and negative 50. And at those values, this has a value of one over the square root of two. So we know from the prior problem that the sawtooth has a T naught equal to one second and omega naught equal to two pi radians per second. And that X of K was equal to 2j over pi k 
when k was not equal to zero and it was equal to zero when k was equal to zero. So now we can find h of jk omega naught and h of jk omega naught is going to be equal to 50 over jk 2 pi plus 50. So y of k is equal to x of k times h of jk omega naught which is equal to 2j over pi k times 50 over jk 2 pi plus 50 and y of t is equal to the summation from k equals negative infinity to infinity y of k e to the jk 2 pi t which equals 0 and the summation from k equals negative infinity to infinity of 2j over pi k times 50 over jk 2 pi plus 50 when k is not equal to 0. Okay, so here we have a plot of the magnitude and phase spectrum for the input x of k, for the transfer function h of k, and for the output y of k. So they're all sampled at multiples of omega naught, which is 2 pi. So what you should see is that in the first one, the magnitude x of k has the shape that we originally had with 2j two, two over pi k, and we have our phase angles positive and negative 90 degrees. Then for the low pass filter, we see here that it is dying off and it goes between negative 10 and 10 radians. And then we have the phase spectrum. So what you should see is that by passing through this low pass filter, we have now altered the input in certain ways. For example, the first thing you can now see is that for y of k, some of the amplitudes are a little bit lower than they were for the original signal. And also, it gets lower. So if you look at the 10 radian per second point, it's now well below 0 0.1, where it was almost at 0 0.1 originally. And now for the phase angle, the phase angles were originally all 90 or pos positive or negative 90 degrees. And now they're also starting to die off based upon the phase plot for the filter. For the following RLC resonance circuit, what is the frequency response? What is the resonance frequency? Assume that V of T is equal to A cosine omega naught T plus theta. So I will tell you once again, we have a filter. This time, we have a bandpass filter. The way that I can quickly determine that is I can look at what happens to the capacitor and the inductor as the frequency increases and decreases. So if the frequency is zero, a capacitor looks like an open circuit. If the frequency goes to infinity, a capacitor looks like a short circuit. If the frequency is zero, an inductor looks like a short circuit. And at infinity, an inductor looks like an open circuit. So what that means is that if I made a sketch of this filter, its shape does something like this, where it's zero at low frequencies and high frequencies, but there's a point in the middle that's called the resonance or the center frequency, which is omega naught, where it's maximum where that maximum value is one. So it's a bandpass filter with a resonant frequency. So one of the things we're gonna find is, what is that resonance frequency? So to get the transfer function, I can rewrite this as the in the frequency domain where the impedance of a resistor is still R, the impedance of an inductor is S times L, and the impedance of the capacitor is one over SC. So the transfer function, H of S, is equal to the output I of S, over the input V of S. And you can see here that that's one over the impedance. So that's going to be one over R plus SL plus one over SC, which simplifies to, which equals SC over 
S squared LC plus SRC plus one. The frequency response can be found by taking the transfer function and letting S equal J omega. So the frequency response is H of J omega equals I of J omega over V of J omega, which equals J omega C over J omega RC plus one minus omega squared LC. There are two ways to solve this problem. The first way you could do it is to use circuit analysis. Using circuit analysis, you know that at resonance, the impedance of the inductor, the magnitude equals the impedance of the capacitor. Or another way to state this is that the magnitude of omega L would equal to the magnitude of one over omega C. So when you solve it this way, you find out that the resonant frequency omega naught is equal to one over the square root of LC. In this case, when that happens, the current at resonance ends up being the voltage divided by R, which would be the maximum value that you can get for the current. The other way to do this problem is to use mathematical analysis, and we're gonna do that method next. So first we find the magnitude of H of J omega squared, which is going to equal omega squared C squared over the quantity one minus omega squared LC quantity squared plus omega RC squared. And that equals omega squared C squared divided by one minus two omega squared LC plus omega to the fourth L squared C squared plus omega squared R squared C squared. And you get that the magnitude of H of J omega would be equal to C times the magnitude of omega over the square root of one minus the quantity 2LC minus R squared C squared quantity times omega squared plus L squared C squared omega to the fourth. So to find omega naught, the resonant frequency, notice this doesn't mean fundamental frequency at this point, it means omega naught, you look for the peak of the magnitude of H of J omega squared. So you take the derivative with respect to omega of H of J omega squared, and you set that equal to zero. And so what you'll find is that that maximum value occurs when one minus L squared C squared omega to the fourth is equal to zero, or when omega naught is equal to one over the square root of LC, as we found previously. So this is our resonant frequency. And the magnitude of the frequency response at that resonant frequency would be equal to the square root of C squared over LC divided by one minus 2LC minus R squared C squared times one over LC plus L squared C squared over L squared C squared, which equals one over R, which is exactly what we found before for the maximum gain. So, if x of t is equal to a cosine omega naught t plus theta, then i of t is going to equal a times the magnitude of h of j omega naught times the cosine of omega naught t plus theta plus the angle for h of j omega naught. Since omega naught 
is equal to one over the square root of LC. We get that the power is equal to A times the magnitude of H of J omega naught over the square root of two quantity squared or A times one over R divided by the square root of two squared. Think about this as our RMS value divided by R which is equal to A squared over two R squared. And thinking about what that is, that's the same as I RMS squared, which is equal to which is equal to I RMS squared over R, which is our physical power. And this concludes lecture 4-1 on the frequency response.